Life sport is back and so too the return of the Mercedes-Benz UCI Mountain Bike World Cup. So whilst we wait, we continue the build-up to the new season with the brand new Mountain Bike Bulletin. We crunch the numbers, reminisce about great rivalries and catch up with the stars of the sport. Here's a little taste of what's to come. Three words that I would use to describe Nino are determined, thoughtful, and and disciplined. <laughs> Kate, uh, she's really focused. She's really strict with herself. And she is a really fr friendly personality. I hope she also says it about me, I'm friendly. <laughs> Who's friendly too? He is very friendly. Not to his competitors on the race course, but he is friendly. His spirit animal is the eagle. Would love to be like the eagle. He's very dominant. Similar feeling like riding a slow train and see everything from above. And all seeing. Your goals inside. <laughs> She's a shark floating smoothly through the sea. Swim, lurk. And then she attacks. And then attack. <laughs> <laughs> For me, being around a great champion like Nino, he represents what can happen when you're really prepared and bad days on the bike, he brushes them off and moves on and he always comes back stronger from those moments and hopefully in my career I can continue to kind of push through those bad luck days because they will happen. When I met her the first time, she was really just, I push as hard as can, I push, push, push. And sometimes it can also be too much, take the time to recover or to to find the right balance in, in life instead of just uh, always training full dance. I can still learn from her how well organized she is. I also have my plan, but I still have a bit of freestyle in there, <laughs> but I still can learn more from her. Now, now we need to meet in the middle. I can be less psychotically organized and uh, more Nino chill. <laughs> Take me Time then to crunch the numbers. The women's ex-CEO in Val de Sole, Italy, captured all the challenges and skills required of an elite rider. Yolanda Neff, defending her UCI overall title, went head-to-head -head over the 4.3 kilometer course against the soon-to-be-crowned world champion, Pauline ferrand Prevot. So here we go. The pace will be high. All level after lap one. Lap two was a different story. Fran Prevot looking really strong on his climbs today. On the first climb, the Oakley Light Hill, the Frenchwoman gained 5.71 seconds over the Swiss and then followed up immediately on the next with a sensational 11 seconds more on the 17% gradient X-Class climb. 11 seconds, that's huge. The story was the same on the third. The Shimano Make Your Mark uphill, another 7.45 seconds gained. Things are opening up here. And the fourth, through split two, the Mercedes-Benz piano climb, another 5.99 here. All in all, Pauline ferrand Prevot gained a staggering 33.68 seconds over her rival on lap two, 29.44 seconds on the climbs. Here we go then, round three, Mercedes-Benz UCI Cross Country World Cup. And an attack from Scherter, I think, on the right. Scherter's going. Can anyone go with him? Flocking a tries. Let's go racing then. Nino Scherter and Mathieu van der Poel battling out of the front. You can see him readying himself almost for whatever's yeah. about to come. Oh, van der Poel goes. And Scherter, oh, Scherter trying to go with him. I'm not sure he can. We're already underway then, round three. It's a pretty brutal start straight off the line and into a climb like that. Is this an attack? Yes, it is. Look at this. Terps to go away from Neff. There is nothing she can do about it. In 2016, I had a good feeling if I get that last turn right, I had a good feeling I can overtake him. I knew already before I launched the sprint, it's going to be really, really tight. I not even had the time to think, was it now too early or too late? I, I did it as quick as possible after that turn. Absalom going to hold it tight onto the tarmac. Here he goes. Is there enough space? to take his first ever win here in the homestand. Oh my 
word. I believe that when you're racing sports on a high level, you need to be a bit less rational during the race. So you become a little bit more animal. Everything is a bit more intuitive. It's a pretty demanding discipline. So you need no way to learn how to suffer on the bike. The feeling of getting into the, what we call hot box, it needs to be something that brings uh, some sort of pleasure to you. To get to this point, you need to work a lot on mental training. On those times, you know, you empty your mind. So there's not many emotions going into your head. There's not too many deep talks going into your head. There is no motto being repeated in your head. It's some sort of different flow state, but the flow state, you know, it's when everything is kind of going well and you, you kind of get in the zone and it's a different type of pain. You feel the pain in the most intense way. Good morning, Nisha Wong. First things first, I put Tom Daly on a vlog and I just plan out a bit of my day. My next thing to do before I go out riding is to foam roll my IT band. I'm going to do that and watch my final episode of Friends. It's time to get changed into some riding clothes. So let's get changed. And that's my outfit. I got my skin suit on. I got my groovy heart socks. You always have to put perfume on just in case you've seen the queen or someone on the trails. You have to smell nice. My cousin Morby joins me and he's the only person I'm riding with at the moment. Nice. Hello sunshine. This is the skateboard I can't ride because the physio said no. Let's go. That is my gym finish today. This is the time of the evening where I can just relax. So I'll probably read a book and spend a bit of time with the family. Thanks for joining me in a day of the life of Eve is locked down. See you all soon.